identify the following as ionic, covalent, or polyatomic. And notice on the right-hand side we have a periodic table, and I'm going to go ahead and draw in the staircase where it belongs so that we can see our division between metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. Okay, so we're going to start with CO3 minus 2. And because CO3 is made up of carbon and oxygen, we're going to look over here at our periodic table. Here's carbon, here's oxygen. And so because both of them are in the non-metal section, that means this is a non-metal with a non-metal. And because we have a charge, that makes this a polyatomic ion. CCL4, let me erase my other circles. CCL4 is carbon and chlorine, carbon and four chlorines. And so here's carbon, here's chlorine. And so because carbon is a nonmetal and chlorine is a nonmetal, each of these is a nonmetal. Nonmetal plus nonmetal is always going to be labeled as covalent. Sodium sulfite. Sodium is located here. There it is, number 11. And that's on the left side of my periodic table in the metal section. Remember that these are my metals over here. And so automatically, because sodium is a metal, that makes this an ionic compound. Next is barium and oxygen. And barium is located here, element number 56. And automatically, because that is on the metal side, that makes this ionic. CO2 is carbon and oxygen. Here's carbon, element number six. Here's oxygen, element number eight. Because both of these elements are nonmetals, nonmetal plus a nonmetal makes this covalent. You could also say because there's no metal present, it's uh, covalent as opposed to ionic. Okay, let's look at the second column. All right, we have NO3 with a minus one charge, which is known as nitrate. So here's nitrogen and oxygen. There's nitrogen number seven, oxygen number eight. So both of these are nonmetals. It's a nonmetal and another nonmetal. And we have a charge which makes this one polyatomic, a polyatomic ion. NH3 is one that's kind of tricky. So here's my nitrogen on the right side, element number seven, and my hydrogen is element number one on the left. Even though this one's on the left side of the staircase, hydrogen is a non-metal because it's a gas naturally in its neutral state. So even though hydrogen's on the left side of the periodic table, we're going to consider it a nonmetal, which makes this compound a nonmetal and another nonmetal, so therefore it's covalent. Okay, ammonium, which is NH4 with a plus one charge. Here's again my nitrogen and my hydrogen, two nonmetals. And not only do I have two nonmetals here, but I'm dealing with a charge, which makes this polyatomic. SIS2 is going to be tricky. It's tricky because silicon is located on the staircase. It's element number 14 right here. So because it's a metalloid, we're going to have to actually go back to the electronegativities to determine what the bond type is. So silicon has an electronegativity of 1.8 minus sulfur, which is 2.5, giving me a difference of 0 0.7, which in our range, if you recall, makes this specifically polar covalent. That one was difficult. When in doubt, you can always go back to using your electronegativities. Lastly is my Fe2O3, which is iron 3 oxide. And because iron is located here, element number 26, 
that automatically makes this a metal, which automatically makes this compound considered ionic.